Hello. From March 5th to March 11, 2021, the Brazil Canada Chamber of Commerce is hosting the 15th edition of the Brazil Canada PDAC, taking place during the 2021 PDAC virtual convention, which includes a series of events focused on the Brazilian mineral exploration and mining industries. I'm Carolina Albernas, CEO of the Brazil Canada Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here today with Hashim Ahmed, Chief Financial Officer of Jaguar Mining, to talk about the company and their operations in Brazil. So Hashim, welcome, and thank you very much for being here today. Hi, Carolina, how are you? Good. Uh, so why don't we start by having you introducing yourself and telling us a little bit more about Jaguar Mining and its current operations in Brazil. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for inviting us to this forum. Uh, Jaguar Mining has got two operating assets in the Iron Cord area of uh, Brazil, which is pretty much the state of Minas Gerais. We've got two operating assets, gold mines, uh, one on each side of the major city, Belo Horizonte, and um, with developed infrastructure, um, access to great uh, workforce, as well as access to a mining hub in Belo, uh, which uh, is, is the impressive um, young generation technology-oriented professionals who are working on some really awesome uh, um, uh, solutions for the mining industry. Our operations are, uh, in, back in 2020, they produced 90,000 ounces, approximately 90,000, 91,000. We established a baseline there. Our aim is to build up on that baseline and um, now grow the company towards an annual sustainable production target of 100,000 ounces. Um, once we've reached that, we've got enough land positions around our current operations that uh, we should be able to fill our mill capacity, which is right now underutilized, with new deposits. So the, pump, the, the focus of going ahead uh, in the next year, as well as this year, is to invest a lot in exploration. So what's the future growth prospect of the company? So exactly that point, right? Uh, exploration is the future. I think for any mining company, irrespectively whether it's gold or not, um, you know, the, the future lies in exploration. So we've identified a couple of hotspots or prospects around our current operating mines. As I said, we've got excess capacity. Um, we can fill those mills with those new deposits. So during 2021, even going into 2022, um, our plan is to invest our free cash flow, a portion of our free cash flow um, in, in, in exploration and bring those, uh, bring those new deposits into reserves and resources. And then once uh, we've done that, bring them into production in the next three to four years. Wow, this is great. So talking about the areas of operation, what is the biggest regulatory challenge that you are facing right now? I think all mining companies are facing two biggest challenges. First of all, because of the pandemic, um, you know, all, 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 all mining companies have uh, this challenge of slow down process of getting permits. So whether you are seeking an exploration permit or a permit to expand your facility or just do anything within the mining space, permitting has become very slow. Uh, governments are shut down, people are working remotely. Um, second thing is, uh, within the pandemic, it's of course the health risks for our, for our workforce. Brazil has started it back. Brazil has started its vaccination uh, campaign, but it's still early stages. So that's going to be a, a significant risk for all mining companies. But the second biggest issue, I would say, is um, post Bramadino event that happened in Brazil. Um, I think. The, um, the intensity of, um, of um, monitoring and oversight of tailing facilities, getting permits to expand those tailings. Those are gonna be some really hard things to do, um, not only in Brazil, but also in, in the rest of the world, but particularly in Brazil, because of the events that happened uh, in the past few years, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, for sure. That's uh, definitely the pandemic has definitely created uh, 
a challenge for all companies operating and the risks with the employees. So how do you expect or do you expect any uh, regulatory changes in the near future that could actually affect uh, production in any way? I think um, the biggest um, regulatory hurdle to pass for any company in the future is if they don't have enough um, uh, enough capacity in their tailings and they want to expand that or they want to build up a new tailing facility, I think that's going to be one of the biggest hurdles. Getting environmental approvals, getting community approvals, getting community buy-in. Um, CSR and e ESG is therefore become front and center in Brazil now. Um, so those are going to be some of the key things that I think all companies are going to face. And I think when Bravadina happened in, in Brazil, we all realized that we all need to look at some of these tailings that companies built 15, 20, 30 years ago. Technology has improved. How can we lower the risk? Um, Jaguar took a very good step within the first year of that event happening. Um, first of all, none of our tailings are downstream, but uh, sorry, none of our tailings are upstream, they're all downstream. Um, but what we've done is we've been able to um, implement technology, which we are doing right now, to dry stack our tailings. So we, we, we invested in a filter press plant that really takes out most of the moisture and then you can dry stack your tailings. So I think that kind of a framework is going to be a solution which the regulators are going to not give you an option, but they will enforce that you can only dry stack. So those are the kind of regulatory changes. So, it, you know, coming, I think coming ahead even more so. And uh, technology is going to be a key advancement in, within that solution uh, finding space. Yeah, smart mining, definitely the future. So uh, changing a little subjects and talking about currency now, um, how has FX of the Brazilian AIs affected the overall cash flow of the company? So, you know, um, FX is one of those things. Uh, I always tell this to people that, you know, in Brazil, the most unpredictable factor is FX. Um, I remember five years ago, the FX was somewhere around three, almost almost uh, actually less than two um, and then then it went into three and then it went to four but for the longest time it it stayed uh, well below, well below four and in those years the inflation was still quite high if you remember 2014 15. so while our local costs were increasing we were not getting a benefit of FX and most recently in the past two years you've seen the FX of um, weakened a lot. So what we've seen is that FX uh, is probably going to stay, you know, around the range of five to five point five, um, because over the past five years there has been significant inflation in the in the country. That on an inflation adjusted basis, it looks actually pretty, pretty reasonable to be there. Um, I think that one of the things uh, which is extra in Brazil is the political scenario, and we don't know how that will unfold. Um, but the project projection is that it should stay within four, within five and six range for this year. Um, probably next year it should go below five, and then the long term curve on the FX is that it should be somewhere around four to four and a half. Yeah, there's a lot of Brazilians that won't be happy with that prediction of between five and six. <laughs> but I, I agree with you. I don't think that the numbers are going to change much in the near future. Um, so thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate your time and support. It was a pleasure talking to you. And we're really, really happy to have Jaguar Mining as one of our silver sponsors for the 15th Brazil Canada at PDAC 2021. And for more information registration, please go to www.braskenchamber.org slash PDAC 2021. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank, Thank you. you.